What's up, my people? Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church's Sermon Spotlight, where we're coming at you each and every week with a fresh weekend to debrief in an effort to send biblical truth. And what better way to do that than by the power of conversation? I'm one of your hosts, Caleb Pearson, joining me again in the host spotlight once again, Miss Alicia Battaglia. Alicia, how are you? I'm doing great. Wonderful. And guess what? What? Tomorrow is the first day of fall. Is it really? I it's heard wind of that. I never remember the exact it is. date. Yes. Uh, and, and it's apple picking time. Mm-hmm, that is true. Yes. But Virginia weather is so deceiving. So I'll kind of believe it when I feel it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you're going to feel um, it starting yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Temperatures are dropping. Okay. They are. Fall Good. is really Good. here. Good. That's awesome. Uh, thank you for being here. He's back with us, uh, Pastor John Morrison. John? How are you doing, my friend? Caleb, I'm fine. Good Good to be with you all. Thank Thank you you for being here. You bet. Absolutely. Uh, Guys, let's jump into a Sunday in review. Uh, In the later on segment, we'll just kind of focus on a church life response and really hone in on application, what the church focus is looking like, and what the next few weeks look like. But before we do that, Alicia, I'll come your way first. Let's unpack uh, John's sermon this this past weekend. Wow. Thank you for bringing us a really good word this weekend. It was so it was so good and just talking about how we pursue peace with one another. Uh, it was uh, packed full of scripture. Mm-hmm. And what I did when I got home is I went through and I uh, took all of the scriptures out and mm. put them on a separate page because I wanted to set them apart mm. so I could have all of it together. Mm-hmm. So I have two pages worth of scripture, oh, wow. that wow. just scripture from the sermon. So that was really good. But it was really neat to um, just dig in again about this overflowing theme and um, giving that peace that has been given to us to others. But before we can give peace, we have to know peace. Mm -hmm. And um, Mm -hmm. I think that that's something that we really, that we really need to dig into and ask ourselves, what is peace? who is peace. Mm. And uh, our small group did a little bit of that last night. And um, we kind of explored the definition of peace. And there's, you know, the definitions of tranquility and calmness Mm -hmm. or no war, no fighting. Or Mm -hmm. one of Mm. our members had just uh, come home from vacation. So he's like, the beach, (laughs) you know, all of those (laughs) terms. But then we also have this picture of who is peace and Mm. this beautiful triune God um, Mm. and this picture of who he is and this, and then we have the beauty of the son, this preeminent Christ who Mm. stepped into our world and to the mess, the brokenness uh, of a world that was defiant against him. Mm. And we are, classified as his enemies. Mm -hmm. And um, he stepped into that space and by the blood of his cross has brought us peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, how rich and wonderfully Mm -hmm. gifted we are with this beautiful God of peace. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's that's a great, great way to tie it all together. Mm. It was cool to hear from a lot of different passages of scripture briefly, but you know, very, very topical, very uh, just kind of hitting the hammer you know, or hitting the nail with the hammer over and over again of just who peace is and and how all these different authors in all their different contexts are still arriving at, at mm-hmm. the personhood of Christ and, mm-hmm. and and how we can attain that peace and it's humbling for me to to sit in on a Sunday morning and experience that because it it does rejuvenate this sense of it is going to be in scripture. I'm going to find this stuff. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and if we're not careful, we wait for this, you know, spiritual awakening or something the pastor said or the way it was said. But when we just reveal scripture, there it is. There it's it is. Everywhere. There it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, pastor John, anything as Sunday kind of came to a close, you're thinking, man, if I could have more time to elaborate on this, or maybe even somebody pursued a conversation with you after, uh, and you realize, huh, maybe, you know, what 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 kind of was left on the cutting room floor, or as you think about even next Sunday, mm-hmm. um, what has kind of the Lord placed on your heart, or even the heart of those around you? Um, I don't know how much it answers exactly those questions, but I'll say two things that sort of are at the top of my thinking right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> One is that as Alicia was talking about what is peace, who is peace, and the fact that we have to receive it before we can give it. Mm -hmm. Um, What 
also stands out to me is that idea that peace, the, the number one word used for peace in the Old Testament was this word that we are all familiar with. Uh, it's even in the vernacular to some extent for us today, the word shalom. And that's used throughout the Middle East today and throughout North Africa. It's a very common greeting um, for Muslims and for Jews and for some Christians. Um, but one thing I love about that word shalom that we would translate peace is that what it really means is wholeness. Mm. Uh, it, it essentially means the way things were meant to be. So that when you're mm. greeting somebody with a shalom, what you're saying is, may things be the way they really ought to be for you, mm. which is such a cool idea. And, and to me, that's, um, that's kind of the, when I think about peace, I think about that. And so when the Lord calls me to pursue peace with people, when he calls me to let the pursuit of peace be something that I'm all about, it's because he's saying, I want the kingdom that is in heaven to be coming on earth. And we know there's mm -hmm. a future fulfillment of the kingdom, but he's also looking for that kingdom to be fulfilled in our lives. Mm -hmm. And and so anyway, that's the first thing I think is just this idea that that like what Alicia was saying, uh, the, mm -hmm. the real idea of peace is wholeness and restoration back to the way things really ought to be. And so when we're pursuing it, in a sense, we're pursuing that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is... Um, and this was true progressively as I was working on the sermon. And by Friday, it was heavy on me. By Saturday, it was heavy on me. By Sunday, it was heavy on me. And then by Monday, it was still heavy on me. Um, mm -hmm. And that's this. It's the fact that even more than I thought when I began preparing for the sermon, even more than what I was thinking, um, the pursuit of peace is not our active default. Um, I don't mean there aren't believers mm -hmm. who do. I, I don't mean that. I just mean as a church, as a whole, I think even after I finished preaching Sunday morning, I just felt this kind of a, oh, just a sorrow that many times we just we go on with life, we go on with relationships, mm -hmm. and we sort of get ourselves um, acclimated to the fact that, oh, well, things just aren't that great in terms of some of these relationships. And I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about perfectionism here because mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're, we're in a world that's fallen, and so we're going to experience the fall. But the idea of uh, how much the things I was trying to convey, um, I think after the sermons, they seemed even more true to me than they did going in. I don't know if that's interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, that yeah. was one thing that really stood out to me as you were uh, communicating this message of pursuing peace is that, um, and I love how you brought this together, that you, you helped us to see that peace and tribulation actually go hand in hand, mm -hmm. which is a comfort because we do live in a broken world and we do live uh, still dealing with sin. Mm -hmm. We deal with sin every day in our own hearts. Mm -hmm. And it is hard um, for us to naturally pursue peace that mm -hmm. because we're still struggling with that. Mm -hmm. But um, John 16, 33, you brought this out, out that, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, and, in the, the Mark passage, I, I saw some, some common threads. Mark 9.50, where it's talking about salt. But then in the verse before, in verse 40, 49, it says, for everyone will be salted with fire. And mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. that stands out to me because we can um, either be destroyed by the fire mm -hmm. or as Christians, we can be purified by the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's something about that tribulation mm -hmm. and walking through that that is uh, purifying and salt is a preservative. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing that stood out to me um, is that when in Romans 12, 18, it's possible so far as it depends on you to live peaceably with all men that sometimes it's not possible for us to 
to live in that harmony that we mm -hmm. want, you know, because it's whether the other person, the circumstances, whatever, um, truth can sometimes bring together or it can divide. And, um, that's where we have to trust God in those situations. Mm -hmm. And, um, so it's just, it's really, um, neat. And then, oh, also, uh, Hebrews 12, 14, um, to strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness with, with, without which no one will see. And, um, before that talks about discipline and the discipline of mm -hmm. the Lord and that being for our good and mm -hmm. for our holiness. And so there's this connection of peace and tribulation that is for our good and for our holiness. Mm -hmm. And that brings comfort to me because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I think what I appreciate about what you're saying is it's it's back to, and this is a theme, this should be a theme pretty much on every biblical sermon, and it's the idea that um, God's ways are not our ways. I don't want tribulation. Mm -hmm. None of us wants tribulation. But I would say, and I made this comment in one of the messages this week, and I didn't mention it in every service, but I would say that I lived my life probably until my early 40s, where pretty close to my number one commitment was to avoid tri avoid tribulation, hmm. uh, you know, of any sort. Mm -hmm. Even though I knew what Jesus had said, I think that a lot of times I lived life to, quote unquote, make sure bad things didn't happen, you know. And, and I'm not saying, for example, that when we obey the Lord because we don't want bad things to happen, that that's a bad thing. The Lord uses that as a motivation. So I don't mean that, but I just mean that when bad things would happen to me in my teens, twenties, thirties, early forties, I almost always responded with anger and rage mm. and I, um, easily lost heart. And what, mm. and it, it was not until my early to mid forties that I started realizing, am I more, seeking the peace that I define that God gives, or am I more seeking God? You know, I found that what I was seeking was um, that God would give me peace as I defined it, as opposed to saying, God, I want to find you. I want to be wise. I want to live life well, but I'm more interested in knowing you and seeing you and growing in you mm -hmm. than I am in whether or not these things are are pulled away from me. And I think the, the verse that you quoted from John about, um, I leave you my peace, oh, and the world will give you tribulation. Mm -hmm. I think that's a perfect place where he shows that, uh, as well as the Hebrews 12 passage, just this idea that when I come into hardship in a relationship or any other way, is my first bent to say, what do I do to get out of this? How do I make mm -hmm. sure this doesn't happen? That kind of fear response. Or is it more, Lord, where are you in this? Um, what are you wanting me to know and learn in this? Um, you know, um, I, uh, I, have, I have a few funds in stocks as I move towards retirement. And I have a few uh, funds in stocks. And yesterday, I lost a bunch of money. Okay. Mm. I mean, to me, a bunch of money, you know, right, not to right. anybody else. But yeah. to me, it was mattered because the stock market went down. And as it did, it was really interesting because I haven't really had experience with this. So it was kind of new. And I noticed the temptation to sort of get really sad and grieved. And and yeah, there, you, you wish things like that didn't happen. But for me, it actually, not that I'm asking the Lord to just keep doing this for the rest of my life, but <laughs> but I really did find myself saying, Lord, I want to thank you because it is one more reminder that you're my provider. Mm. It's one more provider that I'm not living for this, one more pro reminder that I'm not living for this world. It's one more reminder that there's nothing ultimately I can trust besides you. And so you get any kind of a difficulty and it becomes an opportunity to either move towards the Lord and find the peace that he is, or uh, you go to him in an effort to get him to give you the thing that you were trying to Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Colossians 3.15, which you brought yes, out, says, yes. and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, yes. to which indeed you were called in one body, and be He's thankful. thankful. Yeah. And I think that is so yeah. key, is um, what we've learned in Romans 12, to 
that to let our minds be transformed. And so there's this, um, this process of like, I think about metamorphosis mm -hmm. and you, the, the little caterpillar metaphor morphosizing into a butterfly. And that's what we have to do with our thinking. Yeah. So we have to take that um, natural inclination to despair that we've lost money in the stock market to, to that changing, metamorphosizing to a whole different thinking of thankfulness. Mm -hmm. Like and that's, yeah. Yeah. and that is an active role that we have to rehearse the gospel, yeah. take our thoughts captive and speak yeah. truth to our hearts and our and minds. As we, as we do this overflow thing, that that's really what's resonating with me, especially as you talk about wrestling with God, giving you your definition of peace mm -hmm. versus us just seeking a settled bumper sticker, no Jesus, no peace, mm -hmm. but no <laughs> Jesus, no peace, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I have found it's convicting because I can get focused on the fruit instead of the root mm -hmm. at, at times. And mm -hmm. I can then dictate my, my fellowship with God, my what, however I'm doing based on his deliverance instead yeah. of his mm -hmm. his yeah. proximity. I don't know. So so mm -hmm. to really be reminded of of what I'm ultimately after can help alleviate something else I, I can fall victim to is is freaking out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And and one it's as if I've hopped out of God's will for a second when something goes wrong. Yeah. And and yeah. then we have a large view of ourselves and a small view of God at the yes. time and we're trying to course correct and put it on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's going to be rough going. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's humbling to to realize this. Exactly. Uh, and Pastor John, you brought this out that Jesus's definition of peace is access to the Father. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love that because I think that one, back to the, the picture of uh, the, the Trinity and the person of peace and the triune God, here we have access by the Spirit through the blood of Christ to the Father. Mm -hmm. And... He is our peace. Yeah. It's it's not circumstances. Yeah. It's our peace as a person. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're going, uh, taking that access, abiding in that root, mm -hmm. um, it, it it's just uh, that's where we find true life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. boy, that's good. That's so good, Alicia. Well, actually, you you are little, the one that actually, brought it out. <laughs> well, I was actually a little fearful to even try to respond to it because I just think it's kind of like I want to say, yeah, period. Amen. Yeah. And yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Right. Well, and, 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 see, and so seeing the beauty of Jesus is, is just, it, he's amazing. John 14, 9, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus is the one who is revealing God to us. I'm, he's revealed in his word. Uh, he's, we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's just, it's amazing that we have been invited into that oneness, mm -hmm. that oneness of the triune God. Mm -hmm. We, we get to access that, not only access that, but but be one in mm -hmm. with with the triangle mm -hmm. God. That blows my mind. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We did uh, Hebrews two with our student leaders and youth group this past Sunday, and, and one thing that came up was the the, the sanctification of Hebrews two, and it mentions we all have one source. And, and, and that common denominator can really help align us with, with what we're after here, especially as the overflows start to happen, because, you know, we, we can so easily define my hope, my peace, my truth, whatever, and then just is see, okay, if it's compatible with this person or not, but we're all compatible for this. It's possible. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. fact, Jesus said, I'm sending you a helper, you know, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to be in, in tune with that and, and to just remember that... The, that old, that old evangelism thing. Okay, everybody bears the image of Christ, so so we have the opportunity to to find out where God's working in that. But same with Christians as well. We, as we experience these differences, we're experiencing the body, mm -hmm. and and we don't want muscle atrophy. We don't want I'm going to be over here with with my people, my clique, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so for a big church to come together and read this stuff, it's it's really almost exciting to to think through mm -hmm. how what does this look like as the sermon ends, but. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think one of the things about peace that I was thinking as I was speaking, I don't know how much it came out, but um, and I don't know that even that I'm going to say it well, but I but I I'm going to go ahead and try to say it poorly. Um, one of the things that's interesting to me about peace is it is first something about who God is, which both of you have said that He is our peace, mm -hmm. and so that's that's the first thing is that ultimate wholeness obviously lies in Him, the mm -hmm. only one who is whole. Secondly, he gives us peace as we begin to get to know Christ. We trust in Christ. We believe the gospel. And at that moment, he literally gives us his peace. 
But then in a third sense, we, we grow in that peace as we grow in him. We, we grow to find his sufficiency to be good enough. Mm. You know, when I was a brand new Christian, that was good enough for me to be reassured I was going to heaven. Mm. It was good enough for me to realize that uh, some eternal security issues were handled and that God was a God of great grace. That much mm. was enough. But it wasn't enough yet for me to really live very differently. Mm. You know, it, little changes happened as the Lord became for me the, the sufficiency that he really is. And it's the same way with peace. We grow in peace as we grow in the Lord being our sufficiency. But then the fourth thing is that that peace that he gives us becomes something that we can start trying to plant seeds for in the world. So whether we, if we are married, it's an opportunity to plant it within our spouse. And if we have mm -hmm. kids, it's something we can help plant within our kids. Within the local church, we can help plant it within other believers as we see fit. Uh, when we see people in consternation and trouble, we want to bring the Lord's peace to that. And then even with those that we're at conflict with, it becomes an opportunity. Um, uh, I, I love how... Uh, um, uh, uh, Ken Sandy puts it in uh, the book Peacemaker when he when he uses in the very first chapter, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, and he says, whatever we do then, in word or in deed, do all to the glory of, of, of God. And he says, by the way, have you ever thought of applying that to conflict? And I remember the first time I read it 30 years ago, I was like, no. <laughs> because to me, conflict was bad. Mm -hmm. And doing things to the glory of God is good. Mm -hmm. So they were like way over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But what he went on to develop in that book was, wait a minute. Conflict is something God knew we would have in a fallen world as people with a flesh. And therefore, when he says, do all to the glory of God, he's saying even the way you handle conflict. And it began to arm me to think differently, mm -hmm. uh, starting about 30 years or so ago of, wait a minute, instead of just being afraid of conflict or wanting to run from conflict, realize conflict is an opportunity to sow seeds of peace. So this whole peace thing, something that is contained within God, something that God gives us, something we grow in, and then something we can plant in others, whether they're in a position of hurting or they're maybe in a situation where there is conflict brewing and we can plant the seeds of the peace that Christ offers. So I like that uh, dynamic sense of peace being uh, almost like a weapon Mm -hmm. you know, uh, properly understood rather than just sort of one of those hmm. words, you know, like um, an Indian guru floating with his knees crossed mm -hmm. and his arms crossed floating in the clouds, you know, I am at peace, I am at peace. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's far more than that. It's, it's more weaponized than yeah. that. Yeah. I, I think that that's really good. And I think that like if we're... Um, in that conflict situation and we're finding ourselves struggling with how to pursue peace or not wanting to pursue peace or whatever, asking your, those application, the six application, how do we move towards peace with all men was so good. Um, and if you haven't, like I encourage everyone to go back and like take notes mm -hmm. of what that looks like. It's cause it's just very good. But asking, you know, asking ourselves, am I, um, am I putting myself in, in the, those means of grace to be able to receive from him? And if not, what, what needs to change? And because a lot of times it's, you know, if my thinking stinking, it's probably because I'm, my thoughts are not where they need to be. And mm -hmm. so the, um, Isaiah 26, 3 says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a really good place for us to start of mm -hmm. um, thinking about God, getting in his word and aligning our thoughts with his. Mm -hmm. And as we do that, just praying through the scriptures and asking the Holy Spirit to not only affect our mind, but our heart to mm -hmm. where our hearts are affected and we want to step out and begin to pursue that process of peace with the person that we're, we may be in conflict with. Mm. Um, but it's this, it's something that we are dependent on the Holy Spirit's yeah. help for because yeah. we can't muster up that 
on our own. Yeah. Mm-mm. When it's no. his desire for us and it, it's his design as well. And, and a, there's a thought has been coming to my mind over and over as we do the, this overflow and the one another's. It, it's this idea of fighting the good enough. And what I mean by that is, well, I'm not perfectly at peace with these people, but it's good enough. Mm-hmm. Or I use my standard mm-hmm. or, you know, it's not as bad as that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, the world's in disarray. Mm-hmm. So this is, we're good enough uh-huh. compared yeah. to the way some yeah. people are at war. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But, so but kind of become complacent. Right, mm-hmm. becoming complacent or, or instead of measuring by God and his, his grandeur, we're measuring by others and their downfall. And of yeah. course, we're, we're, it's going to be comfortable. Yeah. Um, but the moment we go from cross to comparison is just a detriment to our spiritual walk. Mm-hmm. Because you're going to find excuses. The, the world, the devil, the enemy, the mm-hmm. flesh will give you mm-hmm. will give you those excuses, just as God gives us excuses to, to come to him. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's just something. Fight the good enough. Don't say, yeah, I'm, I'm at peace enough with you know, this person, that person. Okay, God, I know I'm a work in progress. Let's do this thing, mm-hmm. um, which is, again, just really, really humbling. Well, and the gospel speaks to that because we mm-hmm. are so undeserving. And uh, I love how you also brought out that it's, you know, who are we to think that we have the right to judge Mm -hmm. in that way? That belongs to the Lord and Him Mm -hmm. alone. He is the one who is holy. He Mm -hmm. is the one that is righteous. He is the one that is good. And He is the one that will make all things right. Mm -hmm. And um, it is just our arrogance and pride and foolishness to think that uh, we can withhold something from somebody, withhold that peace, because we would rather mm. uh, judge, and mm-hmm. that's not our place. But I, th- I think it's, I'm really glad you brought that up, because I think any community groups who go through the sermons, who do the d- sermon discussion, I think that would be a real big theme that would come up, because I've heard Christians say we can't judge, and shortly after that, In the course of discussion, it makes it seem as though we can't notice what someone else did wrong. We Mm -hmm. can't call what someone else did wrong. Mm -hmm. We can't um, address these things, kind of uh, speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil, kind of a backwards thing Mm -hmm. of um, because I'm not to judge, I'm almost to be like a... um, a poly... uh, not a poly purebred. What was her name? Uh, uh, Oh... It was a Walt Disney movie in about 1961 or 62. Pollyanna? Yeah, Pollyanna. Girl who fell out of a <laughs> yeah. tree. Um, that's all I can think of is she fell out of a tree, and I was six years old, and I was traumatized. But <laughs> but, uh, but but Pollyanna, it, it, the idea of sometimes Christians will say, we can't judge, we got to remember not to judge, and then we become a Pollyanna where we actually don't deal mm-hmm. with anything mm-hmm. that is wrong. Mm-hmm. And I, if I understand it properly... And I partially take this because the Matthew 7 passage I alluded to is the passage from which that quote comes, do not judge lest you be judged. A lot of people quote that as if that's the end of the passage. It's not. It's the beginning because he goes Mm -hmm. on to say, first deal with the beam in your eye, then you can see the speck in someone else's eye and you can help uh, attempt to remove that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I do think that your point about uh, that it is arrogance in us that makes us think we can judge. I think we have to understand that the in fact we're going to talk about it a little bit this coming week that it is it is I cannot one of the main points we were trying to make was I cannot hold anything against somebody. It doesn't mean I can't bring it to their attention. Mm-hmm. It isn't that I can't invite them towards repentance. Mm-hmm. And it isn't that if it is a severe enough thing that can't that they choose not to reconcile over that we don't turn it over the Lord to do with as he sees fit. Hmm. It's not that. It's just saying, I can't go around the rest of my life and hold this against them. I have to discharge it to the Lord's account. And and the main reason I can't is because to hold on to it is to deny the gospel. Right. It's to forget yeah. the fact that I've been forgiven in God's economy of far worse and therefore I'm setting myself up as a judge, and that's a place where, from which I'm going to fall. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I think that's a really important part that we attempted to address on Sunday. Yeah, mm-hmm. our our community group last night, we got into a lot of. Uh, the grit and the grime about some of that stuff. So we're excited for next week because uh, we were just uh, talking with s- just some specific scenarios and people's lives in our group and how we've handled those situations. And mm. um, so it's going to be 
we're, we're, our group is excited for next week because it's probably going to get a little messy and grimy, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, but it's, yeah, it's yeah. really good stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So as, as community groups continue to take off, I mean, this is just an excellent resource and, and really debriefing some of this stuff we're talking about so that that church focus isn't just a, a once a week fact of our building, but really a lifestyle that we're living. So we look forward to that. And next week, Pastor John, thank you for being here. You very much. Thank appreciate it, Alicia. Uh, as a reminder to our listeners and viewers, you can find us all over the place. Uh, Sermon Spotlight, we pop right up. You can subscribe, leave a review, comment on the YouTube video, all that good stuff. The fact of the matter, everybody, is that sermons are not meant to just take an hour, but rather transform a lifetime. Until next week, much love. God bless. God bless.